Using limit scans to check the signal path is the basic foundation of the troubleshooting process. Consider that every time you go to the doctor, they check your blood pressure and your pulse. Even if you're being seen for a broken leg, the doctor wants to make sure that he's not missing any underlying issues that may need to be addressed. That's how troubleshooting with the TJA is. Satellite signal is like the lifeblood of the DISH system. By running limit scans on each part of the system, you can make sure that the signal is flowing smoothly, and if not, correct the problem. Now that you've established rapport with a customer during the meet and greet and completed initial troubleshooting, you're ready to begin your first limit scan. Doing this in front of the customer will give them the confidence that you have the correct tools to fix their issue. To set up the limit scan, first unplug the receiver from the power outlet. Power on your Super Buddy, and then set the configuration to match the dish and switch settings. Disconnect the satellite feed from the receiver. If there is a diplexer or triplexer, use the cable that feeds into that component. Attach the cable to the coax input on the Super Buddy. To perform the limit scan, press Menu on the Super Buddy and then press Limit Scan. Press the LNB Off soft key to cycle through orbitals. Look for a pass or a fail. A limit scan will fail if at least one of the transponder's IRD is less than the average signal threshold or if one of the transponders is less than minus 50 dBm. To clarify, IRD is signal strength. For example, when you pick a dish, you try to get the maximum signal level for your area. Let's say 75, for example. dBm, on the other hand, is signal power. It measures how much power is pushing the signal through the system. In other words, how far the signal can travel along the cable. Each component in the system, such as separators and diplexers, reduces the final dBm at the end of the system. So the further the signal has to travel, the lower the dBm. Generally, for every 10 feet of cable, you'll see a reduction of 1 dBm. So a great initial dBm of minus 35 would degrade to minus 45 when it passes through 100 feet of cable. We'll discuss dBm and signal strength in greater detail in the advanced troubleshooting video. When doing the initial limit scan, note how far off the signal is from the average threshold. This will give you insight as to whether the issue is a complete signal loss or something smaller. If the limit scan fails, proceed to signal troubleshooting. Explain your findings to the customer. Tell them that the issue is with the signal and you'll need to troubleshoot further to pinpoint exactly where the signal is failing. To troubleshoot a signal issue, you'll need to run limit scans throughout each part of the system, working your way towards the dish. The steps are outlined in the troubleshooting job aid, but the concept is very simple. You need to run limit scans at every junction point in the system until you get a pass. Once you get a pass, it means that the signal is good from here on out. The problem lies somewhere behind you, between this point and the receiver. Let's take a look at an example. The wall plate has a high frequency barrel, but the scan fails here. The technician then runs a limit scan on the receiver side of the ground block. The limit scan fails, so he moves to the dish side of the ground block. Here we get a pass. This tells us that the signal from here to the dish is good. Since we got a fail on the receiver side of the ground block and a pass on the dish side, we can pinpoint the problem to the ground block itself or the ground block fittings. Once you've gotten a pass and follow the accompanying instructions in the TJA, go back and repeat the limit scan behind the receiver. If it passes, you fix the signal issue. If the limit scan fails, there's another issue throughout the system. Go back and continue the flow until you've identified all the remaining issues. Once you've got a passing limit scan behind the receiver, continue on. Test the outlet with the receptacle tester. Plug the receiver in. Then access the system menus and perform a check switch. If the check switch fails, you'll proceed to STB to TV troubleshooting. You've already verified there's good signal and power going to the receiver. So the issue must be isolated to the receiver's components, the TV, or the receiver itself. If the check switch passes, perform a limit scan behind all other receivers. Even if the other receivers appear to be working, checking them now will help avoid a future trouble call. If there are no other receivers, proceed to final quick checks. The final quick checks are intended to help you identify secondary issues or issues that might potentially arise in the future. This includes checking the dish and mount, cabling and components, grounding, and providing customer education. These checks are covered in more detail later. Steps 4, 5, and 6A cover limit scans and signal troubleshooting. 
Limit scans make up the bulk of troubleshooting and help you pinpoint the issue and the customer's signal path. When the issue is determined to be signal related, the steps detailed in the TJA will help you resolve it. The concept is simple. Run limit scans through each part of the system until you get a pass. This lets you know that the signal strength and power from here on out is good. The TJA was developed by top performing technicians to help you troubleshoot more efficiently and effectively. The process also gives customers the confidence that you've taken all the right measures to fix their problem. These tools and processes are all part of making your jobs easier and helping us to become best in class. That's all for now. Thanks for joining us.